Hi, it's Rachel from Tea and Forget Me Nots. Hi, welcome back to Tea and Forget Me Nots. In today's project, I'm going to be upcycling this pie mirror that I got from a charity shop for five pounds. And this project is in collaboration with Sarah from Birds of a Feather, who will be upcycling their own mirror, and it turns out beautiful, so definitely check that one out after this. Hey, it's Sarah from Birds of a Feather. I'm so thrilled to be doing a Vanity Mirror collaboration with Rachel this week. I hope you drop by later to see what we've got in store for this old Vanity Mirror. I got this mirror from a charity shop for £5. It was in really great condition. All I needed to do was tighten up the mirror slightly. And for that I just put some washers in between the frame and the mirror and that made the mirror sit straight again. To make my life slightly easier, I removed the mirror from the frame so I could paint it all at the same time. And also not worry about the reflections, which would inevitably be my various pets coming along to inspect what I was up to. So here's a quick look at all the products that I'll be using in today's makeover. I'll link all the products down below if you're interested in finding out any more about them yourself. You'll know by now that it's a classic for me to start by cleaning with white lightning and I've actually just learned this trick to decant it into a spray bottle rather than doing it in say like a bucket of water and it's much less messy and a really good idea however I do need to buy a second spray bottle for the rinse section after this that, that'll be on my to-do list. So after the clean I gave the whole piece a good scuff sand with 180 grit sandpaper just to rough up the surface a little bit before painting. and I've just got these new little tools, so I can't wait to show them to you. You'll see it's a little rubber circle, or the other end is a different shape. In this set that I have, there's all kinds of different shapes, and you wrap the sandpaper around it, and it helps you sand in different shaped areas. So if you've got a table with ridges at the edge, or in this case, a mirror with a concave ridge, it just makes it much easier to get that perfect shape with the sandpaper, and sand more smoothly and evenly across the whole piece. This was my first time using the colour Walnut in the No Pain Gel Stain range from Dixie Belle. I knew I was planning on painting the mirror white or cream so I thought this would be a really lovely rich contrast. I did two coats of the stain in total and wiped it back with a paper towel on each coat afterwards and left it about a day between coats although you can recoat it within about six hours. So I'd already chose my transfer, which was called Buds and Branches, and I knew I wanted white or cream, but couldn't exactly narrow it down. So I swatched four different colours, which was salt water, endless shore, drop cloth and buttercream. Um, put the transfer over the top just to see where the white colours within the transfer would either clash or match nicely. So buttercream was the winner and I did two coats across the frame of the mirror and the mirror itself and applied them with two synthetic brushes, a flat brush for the base and a round brush for the spindles that were holding the mirror up. Now sometimes I protect my mirrors either with cards under the edge of the frame or frog tape. I decided just to make a mess this time and clean up afterwards. And in case you're not aware of the genius trick of wrapping your brushes in cling film and storing them in the fridge, this is a way to not have to wash your brush between coats of paint and it keeps them fresh for days, sometimes even weeks, and is really time efficient. Please consider subscribing as it makes a huge difference to smaller channels like mine. So cleaning up that mirror that I let get messy, the best way I've found is to use both shaving foam and a razor blade. Keep the razor blade as flat to the surface as possible so you're not likely to scratch the mirror and it comes away really quickly and easily. Now for the final part which is really going to make this mirror special, I added the Buds and Branches transfer which is a collection of purples and cream flowers. As usual, I wasn't sure exactly which flowers I wanted where, so I cut out a variety of them and played around with the different layouts until I found out the combination that I was happy with. Applying transfers is really easy. 
Once you remove the white backing paper, the transfer is now sticky, so you have to be careful not to let it attach to anywhere you don't want it. Place the transfer down and then use the wooden ruler tool to rub the transfer until it attaches. If you pull back the plastic backing paper, you'll see whether or not it has attached. If it hasn't, that's fine, just put the plastic back down again and rub some more until it is firmly attached. The trickiest part about this one was getting it across the divide where the lid opens, so I used my Stanley knife just to cut the plastic. I spent quite a lot more time figuring out what flowers I wanted on the mirror itself. And as a final step, I did two coats of sealer of clear coat in satin, and this was to seal everything, so the stain, the paint, and the transfer. And here's the finished mirror, and I'm really, really happy with how it turned out. I think the cream and the stain and the flower combination is really beautiful together. And the nice thing about adding transfers is that it can make a simple piece much more of a statement. And this piece will be available at Homemade at the Barn, which is where I have my retail booth in Hertfordshire in England. If you're interested, I'll leave a comment as to whether or not it's still available. I hope you enjoyed this transformation today. If you did, please consider subscribing as it makes a huge difference to smaller channels like mine. And of course, head over to Sarah's transformation at Birds of a Feather and say hello from me. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.